Hello guys, welcome back to another Joe Weather video. Today I'll be taking a look at winter 2021 into 2022. And on my screen right now we have Noah's Winter Outlook. If you take a look on the map here, these red shades are the high percentages of being above average. And in the bottom right, you can see all these chances of being above average, neutral, and below average. And as you can see, the only parts are that are below average according to Noah is the northwest coast, the coast of Canada, and the coast of Alaska. Now, don't take this to heart because NOAA has a tendency to overdo the warmth, especially in this time, because it does bring the warmth all into the northeast, and especially all on the east coast. I can see why they have a high chance of above average temperatures in Florida and in the southwest, but I do not get why they have let me see 50 percent chance of above average in the northeast but that is only 50 percent it could they are really not trustworthy in this prediction especially the amount of equal chances that are is shown throughout this map this is all of canada that is pretty much an equal chances and pretty much half the country is in equal chances now if we go onto the precipitation map, you can see the only areas that are really above average are in the northwest once again due to La Nina, Alaska, and if we go down into the south, all of the south is pretty much in a below average precipitation chance. Anywhere from central, central California all the way into southern Virginia. Now, once again, do not take this map into heart because Noah always has a bias coming to warmth and below average pre precipitation. And especially when it comes to La Nina's, there usually is below average precipitation in the south, so I can see why they have that. But I do not see why they have this ginormous amount of warmth across the east coast. Now before I go to show you guys my winter outlook and predictions, I want to show you what factors goes into my prediction. Down here in this yellow tint box we have the Enzo, which is either a La Nina or El Nino. An El Nino is when you have warmer waters off of South America and you usually will have warmer air come across the northern tier of the United States and Alexa. And in the southern part of the country, it will be more cool and wet, and the Ohio Valley would be more dry. Now, in the La Nina, which it does look like we will be having this year, the northwest and the northern part of the country will be more colder and wet, while in the south, it will be more dry and warm, and once again, the Ohio Valley would be wet. So it's pretty much a flip of the El Nino. And as of right now, if you take a look at the Enzo predict, uh, forecast right now, it is actually just barely a weak La Nina. It's either going to be a neutral or a La Nina. It's definitely not going to be an El Nino, so you don't have to worry about that. Now the PNA. If we go up here, when the PNA is positive, there's a strong ridge in the west coast that forces the cold air south into the eastern and central part of the U.S., but when it is negative, the ridge dissipates, if it was positive it completely dissipates, and the, what is it, I'm sorry, the upper level pattern drops the jet stream into the western part of the country, and you could have a ridge form in the east coast, but nonetheless it would still be warm, and maybe a few speckles of rain showers, but it would pretty much be warm and dry. Now if you take a look at the teleconnections for the PNA, as you can see, it is currently negative, but eventually it does look like to shoot up to the neutral range, even into the positive range as October goes on. After the 16th and possibly into the Halloween, we could see cooler conditions in the east and more warmer conditions in the west. If we go back to our map here, we go look at the NAO. This is a ridge that could form in the north part of the Atlantic by Canada. When negative, you will have more drier and cooler conditions in the East Coast. That is why right now the East Coast isn't as warm as it could be. It could be in the 80s, but due to the negative NAO, it is a more drier and cooler 
conditions. But when positive, you have a more wetter and more warmer conditions. So negative, if you're snow lover in the northeast, you would want this because it means more cold air and possibly more snow. But if you're not a snow lover, you want a positive NAL because it means more rain and warmer conditions. And currently, right now, the NAL is negative. That's why we are in a more cooler conditions than warmer. And it does look like to stay negative and even drop down a little bit more into the negative range, which could mean a positive PNA and an even more negative NAL, which could mean more cold air on the way. If you take a look in the north part of North America into the Arctic, we have the Arctic Oscillation. The Arctic Oscillation, when negative, you have a more colder conditions in part of the country. This is when the Arctic Vortex breaks down and it doesn't stay as strong and it doesn't stay as in a ball close together and that allows the cold air to dip down into parts of let's say America, Europe, and Asia. But if it's a positive phase, all that cold air in the Arctic gets locked up and doesn't go anywhere. But right now we actually are in a more neutral AO, but then it does drop down around the 16th and does stay around neutral to positive range. So you have a negative NAO, positive PNA, and a negative AO around the 16th. I do expect a nice cold shot in the Northeast around that time, if not just a little bit later than that. Now, as we go into our last one, the EPO, which I think is one of the most important ones when it comes to the winter, when negative, the EPO, there's a ridge that forms off of Alaska that forces all that cold down into America, Asia, Europe. This is where your big storms form along the East Coast and into the Ohio Valley and Central Plains. But when positive, your EPO, you have lower pressures out in Alaska, your cold air stays locked up in the Arctic and you have a more mild and warm temperatures across the whole country besides Alaska. Now before I want to go into my final, well not final, but my winter predictions for winter as of right now, please go down if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And now as we go into our forecast, this is the precipitation outlook anywhere in the light green, as you can see anywhere from the west coast to the east coast, slightly above average precipitation, and in the darker greens you will have above average precipitation anywhere from Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, to anywhere from Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, Maryland, Long Island, New York, Connecticut, and even into parts of Massachusetts. If you look down in the south, anywhere in this yellow color will be slightly below average precipitation. So anywhere from California to South Carolina, all the way down into Texas and Florida. Now, this is where I expect to have the most below average precipitation. So anywhere from eastern part of California, southern part of Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, and eastern parts of Texas. Looks like to be the bullseye for that. Now, if you want to go to our temperature outlook right now, anywhere in this light blue would be slightly below average temp. So anywhere from Washington all the way back up into Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Delaware will be your slightly below average temperatures. Now, anywhere in this blue color will be the below average temperatures that stretch all the way from Montana all the way down into Pennsylvania, Long Island, and stretches all the way back up into Maine. Now this purple color I expect to be the coldest area this year would be North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and northern parts of Michigan. The area that has no color for both of these maps right here will be average or you have equal chances for both. You could be slightly below, slightly above for both categories, precipitation and temperature. Now in this yellow you have slightly above average temperatures that stretch once again from Florida to California. This orange color be above average temperatures and stretch all the way from Texas to once again California. And I think this will be the bullseye for the warmest temperatures throughout this winter. Will be anywhere from Arizona, New Mexico, and east, uh, west and post parts of Texas. 
Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you all have a lovely day. If you haven't already, go hit that like button and subscribe and have a great rest of your day.